Let's read the next story in this book, gang. The Debt from Impact Comics number three from 1955 from EC Comics. Okay. And this is the second story in the book. The script is by Carl Wessler. Okay. Pencils, inks by Jack Davis, and colors by Mary Sever. Oh, we got the sun shining here, gang. I'll try to get you guys good pictures of these. The debt. Eight years before it had, it eight years before it had seemed like a bad dream. To Joe Weiler, they'd close the close the ponderous prison gates behind him, locked him off from a familiar sights and sounds and friends, locked him inside a strange new world of bars and gray concrete, walls and unfriendly faces. Then Joe did his ten years sentence in eight and coming out seemed like a bad dream too for his once familiar world had changed only george Ryder hadn't changed let's check this out that's him coming out Joel Ryder. Let's check this out. Mr. Ryder, George, how good of you to be here after after what happened. It's the least I could do for a friend, Joe. As far as I'm concerned, the past eight years are gone and forgotten. I want everything to be as it was before the trouble. He says, oh, somehow I don't believe this guy. The two men got into George Floyd's Cadillac and drove slowly out of the shadows of the grim penitentiary walls things can never be as they were George look at me my hair is white I'm stooped I'm an old man he says there's a job waiting for you at the bank Joe wow. Joe Weiler stared silently ahead through the crystal clear windshield he saw not the beauty of the open world before him but rather the long ago past those wild days of his son Ted he's thinking yes I suppose that's when it all began if I'd been stronger with Teddy back then none of this might have happened he thinks The memories of those days brought vivid pictures to Joe Weiler's mind, and yet it seemed a part of another man's life, not his own, Joe remembered one night. Is this the time for a 15-year-old boy to be coming home? Two o'clock in the morning, he says. What difference does it make? It's summer. I don't have to get up to go to school so get off my back pa pa I don't need a nursemaid he says Joe remembered how he could never even get mad at his son not really he could only act mad 
don't talk to me that way Ted you think I don't know where you've been and what you've been up to those hoodlums your pals stealing a car stealing we we just took a ride he says and the police picked up the lot of you and you got another ride to jail how did how did it feel being in a cell like a criminal he says it was only for an hour then the guy who owned owed the car came down but he didn't bring any charges he says so captain higgins told me when he phoned ted you you were lucky this time but next time well there better not be a next time lay off paul will you i'm tired he says but there's been a next but there's did there be been a next time and many times after during the years that followed but one way or another usually with joe's help ted had time and again squeezed out of serious trouble you know i don't mind giving you time off joe but you'd be better off letting that boy of yours take his medicine for once ted's young mr rider ah oh, that's the guy that's picking him up ted's young mr rider he's only 22 he'll straighten we he'll straighten himself out he promised the father says oh, 22 promised good lord man ted isn't a kid any longer he ought to be working paying his own way he's spoiled rotten he says it hasn't been easy for him growing up without a mother he's been on his own too much the father says so joe weiler had another excuse for ted but the time came when excuses were not enough the cops there i know but michaels is everything you say he is mr weiler a thief perhaps a cheap hoodlum but he still gets the protection of the law but captain higgins ted and his girl lois they were just taking a walk not harming anyone what about a protecting them if michael hadn't passed that uh, remark about lois ted wouldn't have hit him unfortunately for ted there aren't any witnesses that michael said anything wrong the girl's word isn't enough i'm afraid we're in for it this time ted oh no please captain if ever i needed a break i need one now lois and i are going to be married oh no married on what ted you haven't even got a job it's hard enough for me to support you alone i'll get a job first dad i've been looking nobody wants to give me a break i've got a uh, bad reputation okay that's my fault but i've got to have a chance he says you hear that captain he wants to straighten himself out get a job get married joe i've heard ted's glip talk before i think this is more of the same but well for your sake but next time i throw the book at him the cop says
camera is having a hard time focusing with all the lighting. Pretty cool, actually. That same day, Joe had taken, taken Ted to the bank, to George Ryder's office. Joe, I'd do anything for, for you. Anything but this? George, listen. You said Ted ought to be working. All right, then. Let him work. Look at the sun. He wants to settle down. I know he means it this time. George, give him a chance, please, the father says. It's not my money in this bank, Joe. It's the depositors. I'm responsible. No, I, I can't do it. I'd be crazy. Mr. Ryder, I'll give up all my old friends. Lois made me do it. If you give me a break, sir, I couldn't let her down. Or my father, the boy says. Very well, Ted, but get this straight your father has worked in this bank for years one bad act by you and he'll be thrown th he'll be through here understand through mr Ryder says So Ted started his job at the bank the next day and a week later he and Lois were married. The honeymoon can wait dad. We're going to buy a little house and house? That's going to be a bit steep Ted. You can't expect to make the down payment with your week's salary from the bank. The father says. I'm still working Mr. Uh, Wyler and I have the money saved we'll be able to make a substantial down payment she says you're quite something girl Lois you'll be good for Ted I can see that oh the father's all happy look at that and Joe remembered that for the first time in many years he'd been at peace with the world your boys your boy's wife driving him to work in a nice car they own their own home and I saw them out at the country club that Saturday well it's a used car George and it'll be many years before they actually own their home I used to worry about the way they spent but I guess Ted and Lois are pretty level-headed, the father says. George Ryder had been, had, had been the one. George Ryder had been the one sour note in Joel Weiler's life after Ted's marriage. I notice the way you look at Ted all the time, George, worried like. Rest assured that any money those kids have they've come by honestly ted's all right now is he we'll see joe we'll see oh there he is and then several months later it happened you wanted to see me come in joe and close the door gentlemen this is mr weiler whose son i've been telling you about oh, oh. 
Joe, these men are state bank examiners. Ted's accounts are $5,000 short. Oh, no. And, and you think that, Ted? Oh, but you must be mistaken, the father says. I'm sorry, Joe. I wish they were. There were some mistake, but these men know their jobs. Where are Ted and his wife? Vacationing, Joe. I've got to have time to think. Only, only a minute. George, please. The father says. And Joe remembered how he'd st stared out the window of George Ryder's office, looking out the quiet, pretty streets of his town. If it was up to me, I'd I've worked something out with you, Joe, but it's not my money, it's the depositors. For once in his life, Ted's got to take his medicine. No, not Ted, the father says. Joe's known then. Joe known then. He'd known that Ted was bad, or maybe just weak, but he'd still love Ted, and so he turned his back on the streets and the town he loved. Ted. Ted didn't take the money. I took it. Yes, I gambled. I lost a little on the horses, and I took a little more, hoping to win back. But I lost that, so I kept taking. And Joe, no, don't say it. You, it's true, George. I, I didn't gamble it all away. I still have twenty-seven hundred dollars in my vault downstairs. I can make uh, restitution to that extent. Joe, Joe, I never thought you'd. Oh, he's taking the rap for him. Joe returned more than half the missing money, $2,700 of money he'd earned, his life savings. He'd been arrested and brought to trial. He pleaded, he pleaded guilty. I have taken Mr. Ryder's plea on your behalf in consideration. Therefore, I sentence you, Joseph Weiler, to 10 years in the state penitentiary. Ten years, he says. Oh no. Unconditional love. I'll I'll do everything I can to to have this terrible sentence changed. I'll keep my lawyers working for you, Joe. Ten years, the father says. I I never thought of myself as old before. Ten years will be taken out of my life. I'll be an old man, he says. So Joe Weiler had done the ultimate for his son. He'd sacrificed himself on the altar of uh, paternal devotion. He'd left everything. Uh, he, he'd felt very noble. Dad. Why didn't you call? Why didn't you write? I didn't find out till we got back today. It's better this way, son. Your name has been kept clean. Mr. Ryder isn't holding this against you. Now, keep your name clean. Dad, I just can't believe that you did it. Ten years, the son says. My life is finished, Ted. Yours and Lois's are just beginning. You can make 6000 if you do the right thing. I can't help you anymore. Go now, and God bless you, the father says. And so, now with two years off for good behavior, Joe Weiler was on his way home but he no longer felt noble only tired and very old 
I'll never forget your many kindnesses while I was up there, George. Your constant efforts to get me out, the food baskets, all the times you visited me. It, it was the least I could do, Joe. And just remember that there is a job waiting whenever you want to start. There was a joyous and tearful reunion at the Weiler home later that day. This is Joseph, Dad. He's seven. We named him after you. And this is Ted Jr. He's five. It's good to have you home, Mr. Weiler. You'll stay with us. We both want you to. It was gratifying in a way. Ted and Lois were showing their appreciation for Joe's sacrifice and Joe Ryder was affording him the dignity of a job. What a wonderful world it was after all. But that night, Dr. Willis, Dan and I rushed over as soon as we got your message. What's wrong? It's Mr. Ryder. He's had a heart attack. It's just a matter of minutes. He's dying and he knows it. He insists upon seeing you both. Joe Weiler could hardly hold back the tears as he took the hand of his dying friend. George, you choke. You'll be all right. Why, why the bank? It just won't be the same. You've got to hear me, Joe. That money, that $5,000, I, I was on the spot, deep in debt, playing the market, losing steadily. I gasped. I stole that money, Joe. Oh. It took some time for George Ryder's words to sink in. Ted was the first to understand. You stole that money? But why did my father confess? Why did he go to prison in your place? I tried everything to save him everything but confessing but confessing myself I couldn't face the disgrace Joel Weiler turned slowly to his son Ted you you didn't steal that money I thought then all my sacrificing choke it was for nothing he says I didn't know anything about the money, Dad. Lois was working. We were doing all right. I thought you... Oh, no. Then Joe Weiler grabbed George Ryder by the shoulders with the grip of a madman and shook him violently. And even Ted could not tear him away. You cheat. That's why you were so good to me trying to buy the eight years of my life you stole you cheat 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 dad dad that's no good now he's dead dead wow great story wow 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 impact comics they definitely have an impact they definitely have an impact right 